Tori Amos, the opening song from the new album Under the Pink and Pretty Good Year. And welcome. How nice to see you again. Hi, Jenny. Oh, I wish you were in better health. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. What's been happening? Bad cold or something? Yeah, bad cold. What's been going around, I just think it was my turn. <laughs> what have you been up to since I saw you last? Has it been really busy and hectic? Or? Well, did 250 cities, me and the piano worldwide. And um, when I was finished, I thought I was going to take a rest, but Silent all these years kind of told me that she had some babes she wanted me to meet. And I said, oh, no. And she said, yeah, basically you can come willing or unwilling, but the songs are coming. So, And I started writing this next record. I mean, is it hard work writing? Is it? Is it, you know, the 2% inspiration and... 98 perspiration? Or, did you, <laughs> or once you start, do they flow quite easily for you? Mm. No, they don't usually... It's not like an easy birth. I mean, they they have to develop. And it seems like I always have to experience what it is I'm talking about. So maybe I get a seed of something. Like, um, there's a song on the record called The Waitress about two girls hating each other and violence and... And that came out of, um, there was some viciousness amongst different women friends of mine, just different women just being really, um, backstabbing to each other. And yet I had to experience it full force <laughs> before I could write this one. On that one we just heard, there's two different keyboards on that. Is that, that that's both you, is it? Sounds like two different well, keyboards. Actually, it's just the Busendorfer, um, and live strings. And I think what it is, is the Busendorfer is so big. <laughs> what is that? And that's a kind of piano made in Austria. Um, they're handmade, takes them like 63 weeks or something to make. And the, and the men have pictures of naked women in the room when they're making the piano so that the body can feel like the body of a woman. It's so great. It's like the, I mean, I love that. I walked in going, God, you guys are quick. You know where to look. Did you haul that around the world with you, or did you hire pianos in the different places you played? Yeah, but this time I'm hauling it around. One on the European side and one on the American side, just because you pick a piano, and, I mean, that is your axe. You really you really have to, um, especially when you're playing alone, you better know what your instrument can and, and can't do. So I had so many horrible experiences, certain pianos I'd walk on stage and there'd be like five keys missing. Going, oh, okay, hang on a minute. I, I, I can transpose this into another key, but wait a minute. I'm missing five keys here. Well, in the middle, I'm like, I'm up a creek. <laughs> Sexuality, uh, always seems to emerge. I love the way you just it, brought that in. That well, was so English. It was like out of the blue, you yeah. know? Well, that's it. <laughs> Uh, in, in conversation and in song, is this is this a result, perhaps, of um, being brought up with a father who's a preacher? That a, a lot of it is suppressed, and and it's all coming out later on. Or? Well, that or my diet. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, you, I'd love to see how you would have reacted growing up with my dad. I, look, I love my dad. He's he's getting way cooler than he was, but it was he. Both his parents were ministers, Scottish. Church of God ministers that were very, um, I mean, oof. Mm, strict. Mm, mm, yeah. Strict. <laughs> you know, the neck brace, the whole thing. If you didn't sit, if you didn't sit at the table right, my grandmother gave my brother a neck brace because he'd, he'd bend over to eat his chicken. So she would made him have, have a neck brace when he sat at the table to eat. And, with my sister, she kept giving her books to read. And with me, she'd say, when little Ellen learns to love Jesus, maybe I'll have a Christmas present for her in the kitty. And it's like, mm, I didn't get on with her at five years old. I knew. Mm. But there you are. I mean, that um, there might not be, you know, there's lots of songs that come out of experience like that. So it's positive and and. and there's a positive side to everything, isn't there, <laughs> when you think about it? Well, I mean, it's the same idea. If my dad was a dentist, what would I be writing about? I mean, I don't really know. But the one good thing about it is 
I feel like I was baptized so heavy with it that they just held me down there long enough so I could see what was going on. So I talk about it. All right. Let's play another song from the new album. This one's called Pariemas from the new album Under the Pink and uh, Past the Mission. And you're hearing it on 1FM this Saturday night. Um, making the album in New Mexico in a hacienda. Yes. Um, is that, that that's an old building they turned into a studio? Or did you no, turn? No, it's, it's just a hacienda. And we brought the equipment in. Um, Eric, who produces with me, called me up and said, I found this isolated place that you've been looking for. And I went out and checked it out, and it was just like, yep, this is it. What was it you you wanted as a place to... Um, first of all, no cities. I wanted to be away from anybody that was going to have an opinion. <laughs> just because, like, that's the last thing you need is all these people. Uh, you know, y- y- you got to have your own space to make your own mistakes, you know, and... And and not uh, think too much. It's got to come from a place like when you're cooking. You just have to throw the spices in and, and you taste and go, mmm, needs a little more of this. And so we had a kitchen in the hacienda and I was cooking in between ta- takes. In between a take, it was like, you know, I got to go turn the onions. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to do it. Mm. You look real happy now. I, I, I don't know if I'd say happier than the last time I see you, but <laughs> there's, um, there's a, a, a great photograph of you on the, on the back of the CD. And um, you, it just it's a very, you, the look you have in your face is just very open, very confident, and you say, this is me. I'm happy with myself. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, getting, I'm getting to a place where I know I'm going to say stupid stuff about 1,500 times a day, so I'm not as tortured by it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen. Yeah. Is making music and and uh, you know making an album that's good therapy then? Is it? Well, uh, mm, 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 therapy. I don't know. I'd get in the four wheel drive for therapy. I'd get in the Bronco and like do some wheelies in the dirt. I love doing that. That makes me feel better. Songs actually they teach me what I'm hiding from myself. So, um. Therapy is such a scary word, Johnny, especially when we're talking to English people because everybody thinks you're some, um, you know. Wacko. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people do think that Tori Amos is, she is well weird. <laughs> do you worry about that? Dead weird. <laughs> um, no. I mean, they think I'm a sex object in America, so it just depends what continent you're on, what angle you get. Um, and where are you living now? Well, I live here a lot of the time, except I don't live any... I mean, I'm on the road most of the time. I was in New Mexico for nine months doing the album and then came back here. And um, I don't know, I can't stay in one place too long just because I need, I need different inspiration. That's how I keep writing. This, this song we're going to play next um, mm. has the title of God. Mm. Maybe needing a woman to, to look after him a bit. Yeah. Uh, there are many women who would say, well, wait a minute, perhaps God's female. Perhaps no. God needs a man. Well, what, what those people need to understand is that for the last few thousand years, if you've been living on planet Earth, it's been definitely a patriarchal God that's been ruling most of the planet. If it's Christianity, Judaism, Islam, you know, it's definitely our Heavenly Father. So if you've been brought up with, with any kind of religious influence, it wasn't lactating. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So let's just be real honest. The great spirit to me naturally is, is God, God is all that is. It's not about that, but that is not what the world runs on. And I'm talking about the institution here, what's controlled the world, what's gone and ruined cultures in the name of God. And, it, and, uh, that's what we have to understand. Your view of God may be one thing, and hey, that's wonderful. But unfortunately, you weren't um, the head of the church, <laughs> whoever you are that thought that that it was. You know. I mean, the, the 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 thing people might say, the astrologers and people like that, and say, well, you know, um, we're we're into the new age, or we're heading into the new age. You know, the two thousand year period of of the various religions, or certainly Christianity, dominating things, is going to come to an end. But you don't see more tolerance between peoples. You 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 see a hardening up, maybe, of religious mm. dogmas. I think there's is this depressing. you? Well, this is there. There are lines that are being drawn. Um, 
for me, uh, you got to be careful any kind of organization that you get into as far as um, whether it's it's Christianity or there are a lot of people that I know in the New Age that um, I don't know if if they use it as a crutch. And that's my whole thing. It's one thing to have inspiration, right? Because I, I believe, of course, in all these teachers and Jesus, I believe, naturally. But it's one thing to believe and it's another thing to go, but hang on a minute. Tori's got to be responsible for her garbage. Jesus can't come down and, like, fix it. He's got a 10 o'clock tonight, you know. He doesn't have time to come and, and sort it out for me. And, again, we just don't don't take responsibility for the stuff we put out there and that means even the wonderful things too we got to give ourselves some credit that we are capable beings here we've been taught to feel like oh shame shame ugh. like mankind womankind is less and i don't see it that way i see god goddess in in everybody potentially within every person but you know you have to Know thyself. That was the greatest teaching anyway, whether it was Greek philosophy or Christianity. It was always, or coming from Gandhi, it was always, know thyself. Mm. And it, uh, that can be hard work, really. I mean, the only way of finding out is to live it, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you live it. And yeah. y y you say, this part of me that wants to throw this girl up against the wall and rip her head off. Um, I don't want to pretend she doesn't exist because it's going to come out some way. So why don't I like sit down and have a cup of tea with her and figure out what's going on? You use this phrase that you hear quite a bit, certainly from um, American feminists, uh, this of uh, the phrase of empowerment that women need to mm. empower themselves. Um, how? How, how do women <laughs> get more power? By stop blaming. Stop blaming. Um, I've had to work through. Um, some things that have happened to me in the past, particularly the Me and a Gun experience that was written around a real experience that had happened to me. And that doesn't justify um, what he did. Me um, working through my bitterness, working through my blame. But I'm choosing not to blame all men for what happened. Stuff's going to happen. And again, that doesn't take away what happened. But I'm getting to the point now. A wise old woman said to me in the desert over the last year, You know what, Tori? You can spend the rest of your life feeling like a victim and that this has been done to you. Well, this has been done to you, but you have a choice now if you want love in your life because I see a man over there that really, really loves you. And you keep pushing him away, saying, but this has been done to me and I can never get over it. Well, you need to understand, Tori, that that's your choice. If you don't choose to want to open yourself up again and think that anybody can be loving, a man can be loving, then you need to understand that you've made that choice. That man didn't do that to you. That man violated you, but now you're making a choice how you're going to react to that years later. So empowering to me is going, hey, what can I do in my life to be open? Where are my choices? And we also have to look at how we treat other women. Women can be, man, we dog each other. Ooh. <laughs> Come to the ladies' room, Johnny. This is a whole other scene happening. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, like I say about openness, and uh, there certainly seems to be a confidence of uh, that you know more of who you are now and you're happy with it. Well, I knew enough to say, you know what, God? The God that's been ruling the planet I think you need to sit down and like put your feet up and maybe uh, get a little advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tori, good to see you again. Thanks, Johnny. Take care.